Hey everyone, it's me. Up is not jump. And are you ready to begin your journey in <coughs> Google was birthed from the depths of hell in 1998 and quickly amassed enough profits to fix all of mankind's problems. Famine, poverty, global environmental disparity, the Mongolian Empire. But how did they go about dealing with this complex moral obligation? <laughs> right, well, time to start the day. Well, that's lunch. After purchasing YouTube with enough money to keep a maniacal dictator happy for a few days, Google realized they need to put more emphasis on partnership programs. I just need to loosen up a bit. <laughs> partnership programs just mean that when people put videos on YouTube, YouTube finds totally appropriate advertisements and runs these alongside the videos on their site. All right, time to find a new advert for our website. Hey YouTube, I'm Tane, your latest dancer. I can't wait to entertain you. Now Tane, I can get into. And thus being a YouTuber became a legitimate investment into one's future. Move over worldwide economic disparity. There's a new movement in town and it provides absolutely no quantifiable benefit to society. And the youth of today are enlisting faster than you can say. Misleading military propaganda. propaganda. Sure, making YouTube videos has some worth. It falls under the guise of entertainment. But so does prostitution. I don't know where I'm going with this. And from this bubbling crater of creativity birthed the gamers, the let's players, the streamers, the bloggers, vloggers, poggers, and joggers. Look, I don't want to say that being a let's player requires as much creativity and artistic talent as opening an unsealed box. But this one has us completely stumped. YouTube is just a bit like a calm and innocent animal with all the potential for hope and emotion as the rest of us. But it finds itself sealed away from the rest of mankind. There it lies, growing each day, becoming more warped and callous as it's fed by the unsettling dust of our own hubris until it finally explodes in a cascade of horrendous. Did you know that I'm selling merch like this t-shirt? Go to pixelempire.com, linked in the description. There you go. <laughs> the fact is though, I'm not actually serious about any of that stuff. I just really, really love making videos. And to thank literally one million of you for subscribing, <laughs> I just wanted to say that I'm truly grateful for all of you for following me and subscribing. I never thought in a million years that I would get a million subscribers on YouTube. I thought I'd get 100,000 and then that would be the end of it, but it's just kept going and I'm so grateful for everything you've done for me. The amount of support and the confidence that you've given me over the last few years has completely changed who I am as a person and my life as well. I take doing this so incredibly seriously and I hope just by giving it my all, I can repay you guys a little bit for everything you've done for me. Thank you all so much. And I can't wait to keep making videos for you in the future. Now, where was I? It cascades in a horrendous... I thought for this video, I would explain exactly how I make a video for YouTube. I've been doing this for a few years now, so I've got my workflow mapped out in a pretty consistent way. So, part one. Pick a game. The first thing you gotta do when reviewing a game is pick a game. Are you getting this down? I'm gonna pick a game at random to make an example review for this video. But you should think carefully and pick a game that speaks to you as a person. Oh Christ. Generally, you should play the game you're reviewing for three to five days before you start to write your review. This way you can get a good feel for things. So for example, with Football Manager here, here's the first screen. Ah oh, yes, yeah, so you can see Nico Williams is our new hot prospect for this year. So Stardew Valley, am I right? Oh, that's so much better. We're finally outside and we can smell the fresh air. Honestly, this game is so relaxing. I've set the game soundtrack to be my morning alarm clock.
Stardew Valley is a game about escaping your office job in the big city and settling down as a farmer. A big corporation has also moved into town and it's threatening their way of life and you have to stop them. While playing a game for review, I usually just focus on playing it. I only really take notes if something humorous happens. Like here behind me, I stumble on my husband Shane squatting with this hem. Later that night. Why does my husband love you more than me? <laughs> my goal isn't usually to complete the game. I'm just hoping to make an entertaining video. This is why I never ever give a strong opinion on the full game I'm reviewing. The release of Fallout 4 VR is legitimately one of the biggest travesties in all of gaming history. But I thought Cyberpunk 77 was pretty good. It's the greatest game ever made, that's for sure. Part two. Writing a script. <laughs> Imagine you're studying an actually useful subject like film. <laughs> <laughs> they might say that a script needs to flow sensibly from one topic to another, like a calm, babbling brook. Well, it fucking doesn't. When you're writing your review, ad lib, embellish, meander, instigate, reprobate, compensate, masturbate. When reviewing Stardew Valley, for example, you might expect the average review to say something like, Stardew Valley was released on the 26th of February 2016. You take the role of a farmer who has arrived at the valley after finding a letter from their grandfather. Your first task is to clear out the farm and make it ready to grow boring. You could instead try something unexpected like covering the condensed history of farming. <clears throat> Farming was invented in 1995 by Jordan Van Jordan Van, who invented Vans, Vans, and the 1995 Jordan Vans. <laughs> you see, farming's a little dry as a topic, so it's best to lie slightly. But the main selling point when you make something creative is you. That's why babbing with bimbles over here eventually made his logo his face. Chaos reigns. So when you're reviewing a game, be sure to tell some interesting stories that loosely relate to the game. Lie. The only farming I ever did was in Dark Souls, and all I ever cultivated was a fear of the living dead, large rooms that are ominously empty when you first enter them, and signs written next to sudden precipices that read, try jumping. Well, if a random sign in a world filled with death and mistrust told me to do it. And bam. We've somehow and inexplicably summarized Dark Souls in a review about a farming simulator game. <laughs> Jumping around topics like this make it easy to keep the ideas flowing. I do get comments from people telling me they find this style distracting, but fuck you. I then spend four days writing a script. That's a little bit slower than most YouTubers, but fuck you. If I want to film some live stuff with a camera, I'll go through the script and make a note of all the props I'll need for the video. I then give this to my wife, who goes out and buys everything. Oh yeah, take that tone. I book to meet my camera person after the props are ordered. This gives them a chance to arrive before we start filming. My audio and filming equipment are also linked in the description for anyone who's interested. Then once the script is done, I record the commentary part three. I usually give myself about a day to do this. I use a Blue Yeti USB microphone because they're fine. It's fine. Yes, you can get a Shure Super Mario 7 Brothers, a Cloud Lifter CL1 and a Scarlett Johansson 2i4. But I'd still use a light stand and some tape to hold it together, so it hardly seems worth it, does it? You may get some naysayers complaining about audio quality, but uh, who's the one with a million subscribers here? Once all the commentary is recorded, I take the resulting audio and apply a limiting effect. I then normalize the audio. What do these terms mean? I don't know. Just make sure you use a lot of sound dampening. Pillows, towels, covers, your unfriendly cat. I promise you, doing all these things is infinitely more important than a better mic. Fight me, Angel235229. My only real tip for actual voice acting though is when you're speaking, talk like what you're saying is the most important thing in the entire universe. Luigi embraced Peach in his trembling arms. But your brother, she whispered, he'll kill us. Luigi looked Peach in her deep blue eyes and spoke in his softest voice. I do not to care to Peach, I told you to protect me. Once I have all my audio recorded, I ferret it away and start working on part four, recording. Recording. <laughs> you of course now need to record some video footage to go with your audio in order to create a video file. Are you getting this down? What I do first is find the beginning of the script. Uh, here. Stardew Valley is a game about escaping your office job in the big city and settling down as a farmer. 
It took me 10 times to get that line right. So I'll have the game open on my PC and I'll simply record something to go with that sentence. If it's a console game, I'll use an HD60 Elgato something, 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 something. If it's a PC game though, I'll just press F4 on my computer. It's here for the uninitiated. Pressing this just activates my Nvidia Shadowplay software, which records my PC screen. Once I have some footage I like, I then save that file, naming it the exact same thing it represents in the script. In this case, Stardew Valley is a game about escaping your office job, SDFFFBSSSSJ, FFFS, fuck. I then repeat this for the entire script. Around the time I finish this task, I'm ready to film with my cameraman, Milo. Milo has 20 or so years experience as a cinematographer because unlike everyone else on this website, I actually give a flying shit. We then spend two or three days recording all the stuff the script needs. Once this is finished, I'll have everything I need to begin the process of editing, which is part five. To edit, I use Adobe Premiere Pro, which is the price of a mortgage on a small home. I also have Adobe After Effects, but I never open it because it scares the shit out of me. The first thing I do is edit down all my commentary audio. So there's no pauses, it matches the script and it sounds as professional as possible. Perfect. Once all the audio is edited down, all I then need to do is drop in all the video clips I previously recorded until the video is done. And that's it really. I can then upload it to www.youtube.com forward slash channel forward slash UCFLWN7VRU8M057QJF8TSBAA. Do you know that website? Yeah. It's also worth saying that I very recently found an editor, but if you don't have SkillBear or ExpressVGA helping you out, then affording one of those anytime soon is probably quite unlikely. But the flow we've just discussed works pretty much the same way without one. So, part illusion, the conclusion. That's so stupid. Overall, <laughs> overall then, a lot of people do ask me how to get started making videos. And the best general advice I can give them is one, your first videos will likely not be very good, and two, Get on with it. This advice may seem a little dismal, but honestly, every time you make a video, if you just put effort in, you'll naturally improve. In my first videos, honestly, I sound like I've completely given up on life. The more charisma you have, the more speech and barter points you have. And that was me trying to sound actually interesting. But everyone starts off bad. Bring up Steven Spielberg's first movie. See, not that good. And his second, how embarrassing. And now for the weather. Oh, this is the end, isn't it? So today, folks, we have a cold front coming in over Spiral Mountain, but more importantly, things are finally looking up for Yoshi's Island. Oh, wait, no, we're getting something in. Yeah? Yeah, they're all dead. Like a really sad rainbow. I'm done now, you can go. <laughs> Thanks for watching, everyone. I hope you enjoyed the new style of video. I'm gonna be filming all my videos in a studio like this, at least for a while. And because it's a little bit of a pricey experience, please consider joining my Patreon, where I post extra videos and behind the scenes for stuff like this. Like this? Yeah. Okay. yeah, and then dissolve up to the top. You know what? That's totally gonna work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't die every time I make a video. So that's linked in the description and it will be linked at the end of the video. If you don't like Patreon, then you can become a member to support me and you'll get all the same benefits. There's a little join button somewhere. Probably not above me, that doesn't really make any sense.